Good morning, everyone! Welcome to another episode of our home-based learning for maths. Make sure to have all your materials ready as we proceed for today's lesson. For today's lesson, we will proceed to a new topic which is Word Problems. In this lesson, we will all learn to Solve word problems involving area and perimeter of composite figures and apply the whole parts part strategy to solve word problems. Let's get started. Let us look at the given problem. A rectangular piece of cloth measures 80 centimeters by 60 centimeters. When it is placed on a rectangular table, it leaves a margin 5 cm wide all around it. Find the area of the table not covered by the cloth. What information are found in the story that will help us answer the problem? We know that the piece of cloth is rectangular in shape. And its measurement is 80 cm by 60 cm. Meaning, its length is 80 cm and its breadth is 60 cm. What is 5 cm about? When the tablecloth was placed on a rectangular table, there was a margin that was left all around it, and that is 5 cm wide. Same as with the illustration. In the given problem, we need to find the area of the table not covered by the cloth. In order to answer the given problem, we will first find the area of the rectangular table. In order to do this, let's remember the formula length times breadth. What is the length of the given table? To answer this problem, we will be using the whole part part strategy. In the given problem, let's look at the whole picture. The whole picture is made up of the area of the table together with the rectangular piece of cloth placed on top of it. Now let us first find the area of the rectangular table. By looking at the given picture, we know that the length of the table is made up of 5 cm, 80 cm, and 5 cm. To get the length of the table, we add 5 plus 80 plus 5, which is 90 cm. Next, we find the breadth of the given rectangular table. To get the breadth of the rectangular table, we add 5 cm plus 60 cm and 5 cm, which will give us a total of 70 cm. To get the area of the rectangular table, we multiply the length and the breadth, which is 90 times 70. 90 times 70 will give us 6,300 square centimeters. Remember that in finding the area, the unit of measure should be square centimeters. Next, we are going to find the area of the rectangular cloth. To get the area of the cloth, we multiply its length and breadth. The length of the given cloth is 80 centimeters and its breadth is 60 cm, as shown in the given figure. So, 80 times 60 is equal to 4,800 square centimeters. The area of the rectangular piece of cloth is 4,800 square centimeters. Since we already know the area of the rectangular table and the area of the cloth, we can already find the area of the table that is not covered by the cloth. And in order to do that, we will be subtracting 
the area of the table, and the area of the cloth. So, 6,300 minus 4,800 is equal to 1,500 square centimeters. The area of the table not covered by the cloth is 1,500 square centimeters. Let's practice some more. The figure shows a rectangular field with a path 2 meters wide around it. Find the area of the path. Using your maths journal, I would want you to find the answer for the given problem using the whole part part strategy. What important information can help us answer the given problem? We know that 2 meters is all about how wide the path is around the rectangular field, as shown in the given figure. In the given story, we need to find the area of the path. By looking at the given figure, we can imagine the hole that is made up of the area of the path and the area of the rectangular field. We can also think of the hole as the big rectangle, which is the area of the path, and the small rectangle, which is the area of the rectangular field. To get the area of the path, we would be subtracting the area of the big rectangle minus the area of the small rectangle. Let's first find the area of the big rectangle. By looking at the given figure, we can imagine the hole that is made up of the area of the path and the area of the rectangular field. We can also think of the hole as the big rectangle, which is the area of the path, and the small rectangle, which is the area of the rectangular field. To get the area of the path, we would be subtracting the area of the big rectangle minus the area of the small rectangle. Let's first find the area of the big rectangle. To get the area of the big rectangle, let us first multiply its length and breadth. What is the length of the big rectangle? To get the length of the big rectangle, we add 2 meters plus 25 meters plus 2 meters, which is 29 meters. The length of the big rectangle is 29 meters. Next, let's find the breadth of the big rectangle. To find the breadth of the big rectangle, we add 2 meters plus 12 meters plus 2 meters, which is 16 meters. The breadth of the big rectangle is 16 meters. Since we already know the length and the breadth of the big rectangle, we can already get its area. To get the area of the big rectangle, we multiply 29 meters by 16 meters which is 464 square meters. Do not forget to show the working as you answer the given problem. This time, let's try to find the area of the small rectangle or the rectangular field. To find the area of the small rectangle, we need to multiply its length and breadth. The length of the small rectangle or the rectangular field is 25 meters and its breadth is 12 meters. So 25 multiplied by 12 will give us 300 square meters. We can say that the area of the small rectangle is 300 square meters. Since we already know the area of the big rectangle and the small rectangle, we can now find out the area of the path. To get the area of the path, let's remember to subtract area of the big rectangle with the area of the small rectangle, which is 464 minus 300. And the answer would be 164 square meters. The area of the path is 164 square meters. 
Let's check how much you have learned in this lesson. This time, I want you to answer the online quiz in the BBS portal. After the short quiz, do not forget to answer your workbook pages 129 to 133. Also, take a picture of your workbooks and send it to my WhatsApp. That's it for me. I'm counting on you. Till our next lesson, have a good day! Let's check how much you have learned in this lesson. This time, I want you to answer your workbook pages 121 to 124. To be sure of your answers, remember to always show we are working and do not forget the unit. That's it for me. I believe you can do it very well. Till our next lesson, have a good day!